today. You think Peter Obi is better than what we are having today? An inspiring leader. That those who believe that Peter Obi does not even measure up. He was there in Anambra State. Those who say you cannot compare Anambra and Lagos State, if that is the index. Good. You can compare the policies. You can compare the environment. When Peter Obi came into Anambra State, Anambra was coming last in education. The governor, governor of Anambra State, the former governor, Ungo Kembadunichu, was the only governor that PDP did not allow to return for the second term. Only. So you can imagine the level of, of debt that Anambra State was suffering. People were massacred on the street, including the chairman of MDA. Security was terrible. Infrastructure was comatose. Education was appalling. Peter B. came in. On the whole situation. Within two years, three years, Anambra was coming third. Medical facilities, golden. Infrastructure, superb. He changed it from consumption to production. That even some of his opponents that don't know what to say, <laughs> they're accusing him that he invested Anambra State money in some companies that are yielding something for Anambra State today. Left nothing in Anambra State. He saved so much that the subsequent governor used part of it to build an international airport by his own confession. Don't compare gold with carrots. Is that what you say between Peter Obi and Bola Tinobu, that those who say Anambra does not measure up? You can't measure Anambra and Lagos State by every standard. You know, when you want to judge a man, you judge him by his antecedents. You know what happened in Lagos? The Miloko philosophy is family to crossing. Have you ever seen Peter Obi receive any land in Anambra State? They rejected every land, including the one he's entitled to. Go to Lagos State. You know better than myself. Some people describe the owners of Lagos as the largest land owners in the whole of West Africa. Go to Lagos. The same dynasty has been ruling from 1999. Wife, senator, daughter, son. Even in, as the leader of Nigeria, <laughs> the same papa. Would you, would you wife, say, are you accusing of this? this join. Are you accusing this girl? put words into my mouth. I'm not placing anybody in the dock. Nobody is an accused. I mean, you're, you're making allegations of nepotism. That's it's what you... It's not allegations. The facts are there. That this government is nepotistic? Something worse than nepotistic. Is that fair to say? A meritocracy. You know what it means when you place your children in order of protocol before ministers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? What do you call that? What do you call that I saw? What is that? You know what it means when you put your wife at par with the vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in terms of manpower, in terms of security? Have you seen a Michelle Obama being involved in the political process of America? Let me tell you, I thought Buhari's regime was going to be the worst. In nine months, this government has surpassed it. Let me tell you, this government started from the manager to the wife, to the sons, using the private jet to attend parties, desecrating the hollow chamber of leadership. Talk about the daughters, talk about the sons in law, the daughters in law. Then when you go to the daughters and sons of friends, what do you call that? What leadership system is that? It's a country that has these geopolitical zones. And you're just appointing only the people from that sphere of little click. And you're expecting loyalty. This government, Mr. Kuhn, says, look, we're making some policies. They might be painful in the moment, but it's going to be like the pangs of childbearing. In the end, it's going to bring some joy. Are you hopeful? 
of the possibility that this process is just momentary. At the end of the day, there is light at the end of the tunnel in all of these policies that this government is putting in place. If your wife is pregnant, and after the pangs of childbirth, she gave birth to a monster, will you rejoice? All their policies have been given birth to monsters, not children. You told us first subsidy is gone. And after punishing the people, the first subsidy is remaining. What have you given birth to? Monster. You told us you're unifying the dual foreign exchange. And after a while, Naira has become worthless. Even less valuable and the safer. And you again, you're telling us, no, that's not the true reflection of the value of Naira. And you are the one who voluntarily devalued the Naira, uh, Naira to that level. Is that childbirth? No. That is a monster. You told us that you're imposing sanctions on the Nigerian Republic so that they would go back to democracy. Have they gone to democracy? You lifted the sanctions. What have you achieved? You punished the eight states of the north from KB to Sokoto, to Zamfara, to Jigawa, to Katsina, to Yobe, to Boronu. You brought all of them, punished them immensely. And after eight months without achieving anything, is that childbirth? No. Childbirth is that you give birth to something new. When thesis and antithesis meet, they give birth to synthesis. That is something new. Childbirth. Not when you finish punishing the people and you go back to a situation that is worse than they were when you started the policy. That is monster. So this government, sorry, the pangs of childbirth have been a punishment. You're telling people to be patient. And you're wearing a watch. What of millions? Why you're telling people to be patient? Is that childbirth? You're telling people to be patient. You say you want to, uh, you know, implement or sign a report. And you have for the eight ministers. Even Motala Mohammed, when he became head of state, I learned the first thing he did was to purge himself. To say, look, this, this, this is not right. I will start with myself. If you want to implement such things like Orosanya, start with yourself. Orosanya is about cutting the cost of governance. So where is the childbirth in this? No, it's not childbirth. It is monster. I can tell you, with all the pains in a woman, if she gives birth and she discovers she has given birth to a monster, she herself will run away. Nigerians are running away from this so-called policy because they are simply punishing the people immensely. 2,000 naira for a dollar, and you say, the childbirth. No, it's a monster. 